everyone and welcome to our panel. We're going to get started. We have lots we can go through today. Uh, so welcome to our panel, the rise and rise of the indie author, talking about self-publishing futures uh, today. I'm Jo Penn. I write thrillers, dark fantasy, crime as J.F. Penn, oh, and memoir, and also non-fiction as Joanna Penn. I'm also a podcaster at the Creative Penn Podcast. Anyone listen to my show? Hello creatives, lovely to see you all. And uh, I'm here with Orna Ross and Michael Ron, who are going to introduce themselves. Orna. Hi everyone, I'm Orna Ross. I am a novelist, historical novelist, uh, a poet for my sins, and I'm also founder director of the Alliance of Independent Authors. Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Laron, and I am an author of over 90 books of science fiction and fantasy. And I have a YouTube channel called Author Level Up, and I am Out Allies Outreach Manager as well. So great to be with you. Yes, so we, we come from different, I guess, places in our lives and in our technology backgrounds. So I want to sort of start with, I started publishing, self-publishing in 2007, which was the same year that Amazon launched the Kindle and the same year that the iPhone was launched. And I've essentially surfed the wave of technology over the last... 15, 17 years, however long it's been now. I've been a full-time independent author since 2011, and uh, I run my own business. I'm the only employee, uh, yeah, basically writing and publishing. So the attitude to technology is so very important. So I wanted to just start with that around attitude, because things have changed a lot since I started in 2007. So Michael, let's start with you. Why is attitude to technology so important? Attitude is important for technology because when you adopt technology, it makes your life a lot easier. And I, I found that you, I could spend my time not wanting to adopt something or not wanting to do tech, and I had to work a lot harder to do it. I, when I first started self-publishing, there were so many things that we have today that we don't have or that we didn't have back in 2014 when I started. Like I had to lay out my own ebooks and my own print books and that was an exercise in wanting to beat your head against the wall. And so being able to adopt technology, even though there is a learning curve, I think is, is really important because at the end of the day, our value and, and, and where we compete is the fact that we can get books to market faster and, and we can do it in a lot less with, with a lot less energy. And so being able to use technology as a way to become a better version of yourself, I think is really important. Yeah, so I started way back when, um, when self-publishing meant a consignment print of books under your bed, um, in the garage or whatever. Um, my first self-published book was like that. It was for, just for a, a women's group that I worked with and I published for them. And it was such hard work. We got it into the bookstores and we got to a second print run. But the whole thing of dealing with returns and all the middlemen, it was not set up for authors at all. Then came digital ebooks. Whoa, fantastic. Print on demand. Wow, amazing. So our title today is The Rise and Rise of the Indie Author. And what that means is that essentially now we can reach our readers directly without any of those middle men or women in between. And that is for me, who started back, I'm heading for 40 years since I first earned some money as a writer. Um, for me, that is a miracle. I came into self-publishing over a decade ago formed the Alliance of Independent Authors because people didn't get it and I was looking for an association to join and there wasn't one and so we all got together and a whole load of amazing indies, some of whom are scattered around this room, got together and we are changing publishing and we are the future. It's called self-publishing futures here but actually we are the future of publishing as authors. It's amazing what we can do. Yeah, and it's, it's good to, the rise and rise is great because every year we come, and Orna and I have been coming since 2012 uh, here, um, we have more space as authors, we have new technologies, I mean, uh, and every year there's more opportunity. And that's what I would say to you, even if you feel like, oh, I'm just starting now, and like they started ages ago, they must be way ahead. 
we've all reinvigorated our businesses, changed our businesses. Even in the last 18 months, I've pivoted to Kickstarter, to Shopify, powered by Book Vault over there. Um, so there's new opportunities now, new opportunities all the time. And I guess one of the waves of opportunity that's coming through right now is Generative AI, lots of talks all over the fair about generative AI. Um, most of the space is completely filled up with people wanting to hear about it. So we just wanted to address one of the things that is bound to be asked before it's asked. So Orna, given that some people have um, ethical concerns and creator concerns, can you talk about the attitude of the Alliance of Independent Authors to generative AI? Yes, so the Alliance of Independent Authors uh, as a representative body for authors is AI curious and positive. So we are interested in what AI can do as a tool for our members um, in their writing and in their publishing work. So people who haven't gone there and haven't explored AI, authors are quite, some authors are quite worried about, you know, we should just give up and go home. The machines are soon going to be able to write better than we are. And um, I heard that about the typewriter and the word processor and you know all sorts of things. I'm old enough to remember when word processors came in and there used to be all these articles about it's the death of writing as we know it. And you know, the machine cannot capture what the pen can capture and so on. All these kinds of and when you've been in publishing as long as I have, you understand that doom and gloom is the order of the day. But actually, not, not around here, not among authors, and uh, not among, I should say, independent-minded, empowered authors. And so for us, we're interested in AI in terms of how it can empower authors. And yes, there are ethical concerns and we, we lay out our, our ethical guidelines. They are changing very rapidly. We're changing those guidelines all the time. We're waiting, all of us, everybody is waiting for some legal guidance, but we kind of know how that's going to go. The idea that, you know, there was a copyright infringement, that is not likely to wash in the courts. So every single stall you see around here is a business that is AI empowered. And so if we as authors say, well, I'm not going there, I'm scared of that, then we, I think, are doing ourselves a disservice. Yeah. Uh, now, Michael and I, we're quite geeky about AI. We've just geeked out together uh, in a corner. But Michael, tell everyone else why you are so excited. And also, like, what are some specifics? Let's give some specific examples where you use AI tools as part of your author business. Yeah, I, I am incredibly excited about AI because I, I like to talk about it as an extension of my hands and my brain. Right, so AI can help you become a better version of yourself, and that is an incredible thing. You know, we're all we all we're all here in some way because we strive to be the best possible versions of ourselves, mm -hmm. and AI can help unlock that. And so, some of the things that I'm doing to revolutionize my business and and re really change how I approach writing is using AI in some capacity from end to end. So, from the ideation of my books all the way down to the marketing. So, for example, I've used uh, tools like ChatGPT and Claude to help me brainstorm ideas when I have writer's block. Easy, it's free, doesn't cost you a thing. I, I've used uh, the open AI tools such as ChatGPT to help me find typos in my manuscripts. I've done extensive testing and it's helped me find a substantial amount of typos that tools like Grammarly and ProWritingAid don't catch. So these are things that can help you create cleaner manuscripts. I've used AI tools to help me write sales copy for my books. I've used it to help me create marketing images. And so regardless of what your thoughts are around using a novel to write AI or using AI art, I suggest people don't throw baby, the baby out with the bathwater. There are a lot of really interesting use cases that you can start using today that are one, ethical, two, don't cost you anything to get started, and three, are a ton of fun. So give it a shot. Yeah, and uh, Orna, you are a different generation to Michael. She noticed. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I wondered, how are you using AI tools as part of your creative and business processes? Yeah, pretty similarly. I define, I write poetry for heaven's sake, as well as being very, very old, Joanna. And um, <laughs> I also write, I, I write literary fiction. That's my genre, historical literary, not high experimental literary, but I really care about the structure of a sentence. It's really important to me. I, I identify with that line of Oscar Wilde's, you know, I spent the morning taking out a comma, I spent the afternoon putting it back in. Um, I care about how it works and I am not interested at all. I mean, the idea of pressing a button and it writes a book and you put that out on Amazon is just about as far away from my idea of why you would be a writer as it's possible to be. But I use ChatGPT in my writing every single day as an example. And pretty much everything that Michael listed there, I'm either doing or I'm going to get better at. So for me personally as a writer, it's a tool and I use it all the time and more and more and, and, and that's fine. But I think the most important thing to say is you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. There are things I will never do with ChatGPT and other tools, other AI tools, because either I don't want to or I don't. It just doesn't marry with why I write or my process or it doesn't work for me or all sorts of reasons. The whole point about the indie author, I want to keep coming back to that indie, independence, independent minded. You can't make up your mind in an independent way about something if you haven't explored it. And that doesn't just refer to AI, it more broadly refers to self-publishing. If you've got notions about self-publishing, and I did, I was traditionally published in the old way, I came up through that system, it was good to me. I thought, oh God, why would I self-publish? No, ugh. I had all sorts of nonsense notions, but then I did it. And the second I did it, I went, oh my God, this changes everything. And now we're in a phase where AI is changing everything again. And it's all about finding out how it changes things in ways that are positive for you. But you can't make up your mind about that if you haven't gone there. Um, as we go through this, I was just reminded, and I hope I haven't written the quote down, so I'm going to, I think I've got it right. So it's Walt Whitman's. Uh, do I contradict myself? Very well, I contradict myself. I am large, I contain multitudes. And we both use this quote a lot when it comes to AI, self-publishing, technology, all of this. You don't have to be like 100% in or 100% out. We all need to learn to contain these multitudes of attitudes at the same time, and that's okay. Uh, we talked a little bit about ethics. I'll give you a very practical tip. When you are using any of these tools, whether it is the writing tools or the image tools, just don't use someone else's name in the prompt. So do not say, write this in the style of Orna Ross or Michael Leron or Stephen King or whatever. Use your creative process and make what you want to out of the tools. So there's some really practical things we can do to avoid some of the gray areas. But as Orna said, it's about experimentation. So um, I wanted to also, I guess, uh, I wanted to mention some things as well. Uh, I am using Claude 3. Anyone else tried Claude 3 in the last week? Someone oh, <laughs> at the back there. Uh, so Claude 3, if you don't know, Claude.ai, C-L-A-U-D-E dot A-I, another tip. Uh, Claude, we consider to be the more creative of the tools around writing. So ChatGPT, as it you know, is invested by Microsoft, it's a little bit Microsofty these days. Whereas Claude is quite creative. Let's uh, use it. Well, you know what I love about ChatGPT. I now have three different voices on ChatGPT. So fine tuning, I think, is is very much where it comes into its own. You can feed in, and can you do this on Claude? I don't even know, I haven't done the Claude thing. I'm sure you can, but I was, I'm just blown away by, so I do advice, nonfiction for authors. That's one of my chats. I do, uh, I have a 100 year old Irish woman narrator in my novel. That's one, that's another one. And the third one then is about creative, um, research and empowerment. Three completely different voices, all my voices though, and that's, 
I think you can really get very creative within the fine tuning of the model too, mm. can't you? Yes, and I think what's interesting now is we're getting bigger models. So Claude 3 uh, has a 200,000 token size input window. So you can put in like 150,000 words as a prompt. That's one of the big changes. And there's some wow. other ones coming. I played with Gemini 1.5 Pro the other day, and that's a million token input. I put my whole series, 12 books, in as a prompt. So that is pretty exciting. So I guess what we're saying, but what we've all said so far, is everyone's using things differently. And I think that's, I've, I'm calling it the splintering at the moment, because everyone's using different tools in different ways. So there are no rules. I guess in a way there never have been any rules as an independent author. No one can say to you, you can't do that, Michael. <laughs> so uh, just to carry on, what are some other specific tools? Like what about images? Are you doing images? I know you both do here. Could, could I just pick yeah. up on, on, on something you said there about the splintering? Because I think it's very relevant to the theme, um, the overall theme. There was a time where everybody published through certain vehicles and then you got your reviews in the mainstream press or you went out on the, the TV program on BBC that everybody watched or whatever. And the equivalent was happening in different territories all around the world. What's happening right now is that people can be super successful, famous to their readers and followers and completely unknown to other people. We're witnessing a niching and a breaking up of um, reading as we are every other cultural um, TV is the same. You know, this is the way it is going. And this was highlighted about 10 years ago. But it was at here at this very fair. We listened to a talk that said this is how it's going to be. So a lot of authors are still going on the dream, though, of the, the chat show and the review in the big paper and so on. And, and that is not necessarily where success lies for the indie author who's on the rise and rise. Sure. Yeah, I can talk about some more tools that I, I use for images. I, I use Midjourney, so that's a tool that I've been using. I, 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 I haven't been using it for book covers, but at some point it would be interesting to kind of play around with that. Um, but the, one of the things that I've been using it for is I just, I have a Kickstarter that's going right now, and the, actually the final day is today, and one of the stretch goals is I put together, uh, put together a package where I, for all of my backers, I would illustrate scenes from my novels that they're, that they're getting. So that was kind of a cool, a cool thing that I probably wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Okay, you know? everybody, if you don't know what he's talking about, go in, on to kickstarter.com. Yes. and look for Michael Laurent and put <laughs> some money into his campaign and then you'll understand Kickstarter and next month or the next quarter you can run your Kickstarter campaign where you'll get people to come and support you. We're, we're going to come well, back to Kickstarter. Let's yeah. just stay on AI. Can yeah, I also yeah. say, um, my writing The Shadow, which is on uh, Book Vault, is an AI cover with Midjourney. And uh, the sales copy on the back, including my Kickstarter sales copy, was written by Claude. So there's lots of things we can do when it comes to marketing that really helps us. Back to you, Michael. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. I mean, there's, there's, if, you, if you can dream it, you can do it. There are people that are putting mid-journey images into their books, right? Mm -hmm. So being able to give a, a special edition book of scenes from your novel or custom headers, those sorts of things. So, there's lots of opportunities. You just have to be willing to experiment and play around with it. And mm. the whole world is open to you if you just check it out. Yeah, just on that, Mid Journey just released. I, I just love this stuff. And I, I'm right <laughs> on top of all the new releases. Mid Journey just released consistent characters, yes. which is huge. It means if you're doing like a comic or you want to do ads with the same character in different positions and backgrounds, you can now do it with Mid Journey. So that, yeah, look, you are very excited. <laughs> Yes, you can yeah. do consistent characters. Just go on X or have a, have a look on Mid Journey. But yeah, consistent characters on Mid Journey. I also wanted to come back to advertising because let's face it, we're authors because we love to write. 
<laughs> Most of us do not love to advertise or do marketing. And so this is probably one of the killer, killer apps for AI. You don't have to use it for any of your creative process, but I bet you you want to use it for your marketing. So one of the things I'm doing is using um, mid-journey images as the uh, images on meta ads and then using Meta's own generative advertising to essentially target those ads to people. I don't even do any targeting. So the Meta AI is doing all of that using my images from Midjourney. It, it sounds a bit technical, but what it means is we're just outsourcing more and more of the work we don't want to do to the AIs, which is it's like having lots of little workers uh, doing this for you. So um, Ornit, talk about your Instagram, because you've used images, haven't you, as well? Yeah, um, and you, you talk about using it as an assistant. I always think of it as having a creative, a highly creative, slightly crazy, likely to go off the wall assistant. Um, so, you know, you, you prompt, you go for what you want, you, you talk to it, and it gives you back a whole load of stuff. And then you select and you choose and you work with that. And it's, for me, made a huge difference because I write very slowly because, you know, the comma in and the comma out thing. And um, so having actual tools that can speed me up has made a huge difference to me. I can see now, I was literally at a stage where I was thinking, I have X number of books that I want to finish. And I don't know if I live long enough to finish them. Now I know. I will live long enough to finish them and to do the ones that were coming in after that. And that to me as a writer is just worth everything. Um, and so I am so grateful to have lived in this time to have these tools and also to be part of the independent author movement, which to me has been so empowering and so enriching. Um, so yeah, it's. It's such a cliche to say it, but like every cliche, it, it's said so often because it is so true. There has never been a better time to do what we do, and uh, we've never had so much support and such great tools to do it. Yeah, Michael, I, any more on marketing? Or? Yeah, I was going to say, I love what you said. I, I, I think this is the greatest time in the history of the world to be a writer. It, full stop, period. We can all go home now. You know, it, it's, <laughs> it, there's, there's Never been a better time, and I haven't been this excited about self-publishing since 2012-ish. Like this, we've, there's a lot of 2012-ish energy right now around mm -hmm. AI, and that's exciting to me because I, I started in 2014, and I felt like I was late. I, I, remember, I remember saying to one of my friends, I, I, I don't think I'm going to make it, man, because I... Everybody else, the Kindle gold rush happened and everybody was making a living from their work and I thought, oh, that's it for me, 2014, too late. And here I am and here we are now. And how fortunate are we to have these sorts of tools? Um, from a marketing and advertising perspective, one of the things that I, I, I've, I've been using Facebook ads as well. And the great thing about the meta ads, I should say meta, not Facebook, but the great thing is that you used to be able, you used to have to design that yourself. Like you used to have to have Photoshop savvy and you have to, or that or use Canva. Now you can just generate an AI image that forms a split second impression in, 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 your, in people's minds, right? You're not looking to create something that is super detailed or super artistic. It just has to create that, that spark that, and that impression. And so the ads have, have worked really well for me, whereas I was just using stock photos before. But I, I put people of color on my covers, and so it's very difficult for me personally to, to find stock photos with the right person, with the right skin color, right age, all of that, without having to use Photoshop work. And now I can just go to Midjourney, and I can say middle-aged African-American man in a trench coat, and I get a middle-aged Amer African-American man in a trench coat standing in an alley on a rainy night. And I mean, I that's amazing. And I think also because you are prompting to create the image, it's connected to the work in a way that it, it isn't when you're just finding a stock picture or working with a designer who goes away and finds the picture for you. I use uh, lines from my poetry to create 
prompts of an image that then go into gift poetry books that I put together. And I mean, the first ones, to be honest, were pretty awful. They were not good. I was delighted with them. But looking back, they weren't that good. And that's the other great thing that I think has contributed to the rise and rise of the indie author. We can go back and fix things. If you give your book to a third party publisher, be they a big corporate publisher or an indie publisher, when it's done, it's gone, it's gone to them, it's their file and they will do what they want to do with it. You won't get to do any changes until a second edition comes round. And for most of our books, a second edition doesn't come round. But as an indie author, you know, when you do crap poetry illustrations, you can go back in three months later, having worked with the tools for a further three months and improved your illustrations, and you can go back in and change them all and get it out to market again. So I think that's a really important aspect of the tools that we have as well. Yeah, just another really important tip. Uh, in terms of your commercial licenses for any of the AI images, you need a paid service. So Midgen, these are $20 a month. These are not expensive, but you do need to have the paid version. For example, the paid version of ChatGPT will give you DALI as well as ChatGPT4, very well worth it, uh, as well as, say, mid-journey, also $20 a month. So not a big deal, and most of us have a couple of these, and, and they, I mean, I stop, stopped buying stock photos as well. Um, so anyway, I did want, so I wanted to say that, but let's also, given the time, we'll come back to AI if people have questions. I do want to talk about selling direct. This is the, the future, self-publishing futures, and this has been the other trend. The two big trends are AI and selling direct. Um, so since we did mention Kickstarter, Michael, could you just tell us like, how you're using selling direct as part of your business? Yeah, sure. So for those in here who don't know what Kickstarter is, Kickstarter is a crowdfunding platform where you, you, you essentially ask for money to be able to do really cool things. So there are lots of creators that are using Kickstarter to fund the publication of their books, to fund limited edition hardcovers, all of those things. And it's, it's, it's a, a really great platform that I would encourage all of you to take a look at because there are authors that are doing really well on the platform. And the reason for that is because Kickstarter is a way to get books to readers directly. So readers can go to Amazon or they can go to Kobo or Barnes and Noble and they can purchase a book, right? That's the ecosystem, that's what we're all used to doing. Well now, Kickstarter, through Kickstarter, and through services like BookFunnel, where they are fulfilling books directly to readers, people are more comfortable going outside of those ecosystems. So there are readers out there that will purchase, or that will pledge to your Kickstarter, and then all you have to do is fulfill the books to them directly using a tool like BookFunnel, and you send them a link, they can download it into their Kindle or their phone or wherever their device is, and they can get there, and they can get the book and start reading it. And there are lots of people that are using Shopify as well. I know, Joanna, you're Shopify queen. So, I mean, there's, there's all sorts of ways that you can get books directly into readers' hands, and readers are more comfortable with it now than they were 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I used to have to do my own tech support. So if, if, if someone bought a book from me, I would have to ask them, what device do you, are you using? What year did it come out? And then I would have to literally, by email, help them get the book onto their device, which was an exercise in frustration. Now, you don't have to do any of that, and it's a great. And we're not talking, you can do a small Kickstarter, and um, just something that helps you financially to publish your first book, get a designer, get, a, you know, get, get an editor. That's one way to do it, but we're not talking small here. I'm sure you guys have the latest figure, but Brandon Sanderson is what really brought um, mm -hmm. Kickstarter to so many authors' minds because he did a 40 million pound Kickstarter last year and he's in the middle of one another right one. now and I don't know. Who knows, very, very yeah. big. So It'll be another million by the time we get out of here, you know, so. That means, that's great for Brandon, and he is fantastic, and he has many, many years behind him of building his author relationships in a very close and special way. He's an engagement publisher who really knows how to do it. But the important message for everyone here is, there are that many readers out there who are happy to go onto Kickstarter and pay money to 
to directly to the author because we've been told that's not possible. We've been told you have to have bookstores. We've been told you have to use Amazon or Apple or Google or Kobo or whatever, and you don't. You can use them to find your readers, but a, a truly independent author now has the main shop they're selling from is their own website. They have their own piece of real estate on the internet, and that is the center and hub of what they do, and everything else comes in around that. And that, to me, is, you know, indie authors were rising, 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 and now we're, whoo, we've just gone up like that, because all these tools have made that so easy, comparatively. And as Michael and Joanna said, there are so many tools. If you're already on WordPress, for example, it's not difficult to ignite WooCommerce. That's, I'm a WordPress girl. I don't use Shopify. I use Woo, and I find it perfectly good for my purposes. So, yeah, there are so many tools. We're splintering. We're yeah. fragmenting. Certainly, I should just say one of the reasons we do this, one is we get paid very fast. So I can check my phone and people have bought books and the money appears in my bank account tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. I mean, authors have never been paid this fast. <laughs> also, you can make 90 plus percent of the sale as opposed to 70%, 30%, 50%, whatever you will get, or 10%. Don't forget some... traditional publishing <laughs> and 10% or less. Yeah, um, and also you have your customer data. So you're essentially, where we are now is we're actually interacting directly with so many more readers. Right, we only have uh, 15 minutes for questions. I did actually just want to kind of end with sort of coming back to the curiosity and the playfulness. You can tell how excited we are, right? No, no sort of upset authors here. We're not worried about the future. We're kind of surfing this next wave, and we're at the beginning of the next wave. I started 15 plus years ago, and I believe this is the next, the beginning of the next 15 year wave. So it's a super exciting time, but you have to have this playful, curious attitude where no one's gonna tell you exactly how to prompt or what tool to use for your business. You get to choose. Uh, and we all do it differently. So um, anything else before? Yeah, on that I'd like to say it can be overwhelming and you are an individual, but you have other authors and they have become the support system. So you don't need an agent, you don't need a publisher once we have each other. And that's where the Alliance of Independent Authors came in. We call ourselves Ally, so it's all and I for the individual. So it's all of us together working for each other. And I think you can do anything you want to do once you have the right approach and the right attitude, which is where we started. Playful, curious. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah. We didn't set out to be indie authors in order to have a terrible time. And, and you know, it's supposed to be fun and it really can be fun once we look after each other. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say learn how to identify friction in your writing life. So anytime you are writing or marketing or running the business side of things and you find yourself saying, ah, I, I just wish there was a better way to do this, chances are there's probably a tool out there that can help you. And so I want you to ask yourself, is there a tool that can help me make this easier? And Eight out of 10 times, nine out of 10 times, there probably is. And that's how you can adopt the curiosity mindset that Orna just talked about, because then you can start to add tools to your, to your repertoire that you would actually use, that would, that would be helpful to you. And that's how you can slowly start to revolutionize your publishing career. Great, right, we'll take um, a few questions. Blonde lady in the middle, there's a mic, please take the mic. Hi, thank you for all your helpful information. Um, I write children's book, and I'm just curious about whether to use AI images, which come out really well, or to hire an illustrator. I don't draw myself. Um, do you think that AI images would be acceptable in children's books nowadays? Yes, is the short answer, depending on who, acceptable to whom. So if you mean to the, to the reader, yes, there are loads of children's books out there with AI images already. Thank you. Ge a gentleman in the hat near the front. Um, wait for the mic. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Hi. 
Um, are you at all worried about AI-induced plagiarism, and who would be responsible? Well, uh, personally, I'm not. Uh, I have a bit of a technical background. I understand how generative AI works. It's far more likely that you, as a human, will plagiarize even by mistake than the AI would. If you mean the legal cases around reading stuff into the model, that we can't comment on that. That's an ongoing thing. But, but it, it's not plagiarism. No, that is essentially not. the decision. It's not plagiarism. Uh, uh, it's going to get through on fair use. Yeah. Ch chances yeah. are, because uh, plagiarism is something different. It doesn't fall into the legal definition of plagiarism. Also, that ship has sailed. I know we're waiting for the legal system to catch up, but everybody, it's there, it's happening. Nobody could hold back. If we at the Alliance of Independent Authors decided we want to hold back this tide, and we joined with every authors association, and we got every single one of all our members all together, it would not achieve holding back the tide. So that's, there is no point in worrying about, it's like worrying about the weather, you know, or worrying about the quality of the air in here. It's not good, we do what we can, but we don't worry about it. Yeah. Next question, uh, gentleman here, purple-ish shirt. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, I went on to chat GBT the other day and I got a blinking cursor and I had no idea how to use it like you are suggesting. So, I mean, what do we do? Just tell it what you want it to do. Just ask, ask, ask it. it. Ask it. Yeah, just ask the question. And, and it will help you. So say, I, I don't know how to use this, or I want to do X, Y, Z, and it will do it for you. And it will, if, if it needs more information, it will ask you. And it's really, think about it like chatting with a representative from a company, you know, or you, you need something, and they ask you what you need. and it'll be able to assist you. Okay. Yeah, you. it's a really good tip, is just to say, uh, I need help selling my book. Uh, what, sh what should I ask you about that? Give me 10 questions and then yeah. answer those in turn. I mean, it really, it can do that for, for anything. All right, a question over this side. Uh, blonde, blonde lady. Sorry, the mic's coming, just wait for the mic. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask about um, the difference between the paid and the free versions of Do things want, like chat and I mean Joanna you said that you thought it was worth paying for yeah I Mike, had a little bit of playing around with uh, chat and with uh, okay I well, think we'll, answer, we'll answer that one yeah Michael? so so the difference between ch I'll, I'll answer for chat GPT in particular but the, the difference is that it, the paid version is going to be faster you'll have access to it. Sometimes they throttle you in terms of when you can access it. Um, so with the paid version, you don't have to worry about that. You also have the ability to create what's called custom GPTs, which is essentially your own custom chat GPT that will get you more nuanced, faster, personalized responses. And um, you can also get DALI uh, in, in, as, as part of that as well. But more than that, the yeah. paid version is like the best one. <laughs> yeah. So if you, you want the, if you want crap GPT, get the free version. And what annoys me is how many authors say, "Oh, I tried the free version and it wasn't very good." It's like, yeah, you just need to pay twenty bucks, and it's it's yeah. incredible. So please pay the twenty bucks and then unsubscribe if you don't want to use it. Um, I, lady sitting on the floor over here. I had a question about um, using, uh, like, once you're finished with your story, how do you take the, the full product and basically create, like, uh, a PDF or some type of form? How do you create that form to send to you, the, the readers, the customers? Yeah. Okay. There's a, there's a, there are a number of tools that you can do to basically format your book to create that finished product. Uh, a tool that a lot of self-published authors use is called Vellum. And that's Vellum, V-E-L-L-U-M. And that allows you to put in, lay out your book, and click a button, and you'll get formats that you can send out and upload to the different retailers. Um, for the, the, Vellum is Mac only, unfortunately. So for those who don't have Macs, there's another tool called Atticus, uh, A-T-T-I-C-U-S, that people are using uh, to, to do that. And it essentially does the same thing and uh, a little bit cheaper as well. And that's a web-based app. 
and you'll get your versions for ebooks as well. So you want an EPUB as well as a PDF, um, and, yeah. and they'll both do that for yeah, you. Yeah, they'll create your ebook and your paperback. Yeah, uh, gentleman at the front here. Hello, uh, I work in television and I saw a post recently on social media by a script editor who said I will not employ people on my shows who use AI as destroying writing careers etc etc and I'm seeing more and more stuff with that level of animosity amongst the writing community online mm -hmm. I was wondering do you guys think we should just ignore it, or not engage or what's the best strategy? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll say this, I, I think there's a, there are a lot of feelings on both sides about AI a lot of people think it's, it's the coming of the Antichrist. There are a lot of people that think it's the next best thing. Honestly, just, just do you, man. Because at the end of the day, there's very little any of us can do to change it. We can adopt it. We can you know, choose not to adopt it if we don't want to. But I think a lot of the animosity and the emotions around it are just not helpful. And they're, they're kind of toxic, personally speaking. Michael mm. Laron's opinion only. So I, I think we can only focus on ourselves and eventually people will catch up. It's yeah. certainly mm. divisive, and I think there will be a movement of artisan, you know, where you don't use AI, and I know artisans use in different ways, but you know, there will be people, we already have a badge that says human made only, and um, we have a, a, a member who does that, and there will be readers maybe who say, I only want to read, so you can make it your thing, but um, that's different to being scared of people telling you that it's a bad thing and you feeling you can't do something you want to do. So it's your, it's your choice. Uh, and and just to comment on that too, if 20 years ago you were against the internet, against digital, eventually you adopted it. Uh, who, you know, so people who are anti it now are very likely to have joined the game within a few years time. Okay, last question, this chat. Hi, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to change the subject slightly, if I may. Um, you're talking very much, I, I feel that a lot of the... Um, the it needs uh, to be a question. I question. feel that a lot of what you're talking about has been for authors who are already published. So um, I'd be interested to know what your advice is to people who haven't yet got their first book out. Oh, no. Very good advice. Yeah, so advice to people who have not yet got their book out is, I, um, you mean, Dave, assuming they want to self-publish or, yeah, they're at that point. Yes, yeah, so there are seven processes in publishing. Publishing is not somebody telling you your book is good enough to be published. Publishing is seven processes that need to be done well. And that's after you've already done the writing well, which is a job in itself and which we don't discuss when we talk about publishing. But then you need editorial design, production, distribution, marketing, promotion, and at the end of that, rights licensing. Each of those happens in a row. Um, there are Alliance of Independent Author Guidebooks, there's Michael's YouTube channel, there's the Creative Pen, all the advice you need to help you to make a book, book production, promote the book, book marketing, and get the book so the rights sold to rights buyers in translation, TV, film, all of that advice is freely available. All of us know or are indies who are already doing all of that. So you start at the beginning and you learn by doing. You won't learn by listening to us. You will only learn when you actually go to try and get the book edited, what editing actually means, and so on for each of the each of the stages, and that's where the author community comes in. Yeah, so thank you all for your time today. We will be off to the side, and the Alliance of Independent Authors booth is there as well. Thank you for and your time And can I say today. one more oh, yeah. thing? You are all invited, if you're here tomorrow, you're all invited to the Alliance of Independent Authors party, which is in the Hand and Flower. If you are available tomorrow evening and you would like to come, you can collect an invitation over there. So the booth, the booth is just behind uh, Book Vault. Thank you, everyone.